Have you ever thought what would happen if you didn't have a job and only had the place where you live to make some money from? Or maybe you thought that you'd simply love to work from home or that you would like to have an extra income without a big initial investment. Well, if you have a home with a backyard and a basement, you're in luck. Art Garden and Art Supplies Store There are few things more convenient than creating a beautiful space and then letting it generate money for you almost passively with minimal work on your part. And an art garden follows exactly that concept. You see, you don't really have to teach all the classes yourself, but you can find able teachers and make a 50-50 deal. You provide the space and the easy and convenient access to art supplies, and they provide the teaching for a win-win setup. Of course, if you're passionate and able yourself in one, some, or all of the arts, workshops of which you will offer, that is also great and will increase your profits even further. But it is absolutely not a requirement. What is a requirement is that you will have to create a beautiful garden that will attract people, especially women who statistically are far more inclined to participate in art courses or workshops. And those people will definitely have an eye for beauty. So you will have a hard time attracting them into something which embodies the pursuit for the archetype of beauty with an ugly garden. That being said, your garden will also have to be functional. So big parts of it can be just simply a well-maintained lawn for them to sit and work. You can think of your garden design process as painting on a canvas. And if you're stuck with any detail, why not even consult the artists you may collaborate with on what would accentuate different spots better? The garden will have to have sitting areas and decorative elements. Think also of the functional aspect of the layout. There needs to be communication between the teacher and the students. If the teacher wanders around between the students as they work, that may not be much of an issue. But there should also be a focal point of the garden where the teacher can exhibit how to do things in a way that all can watch. There should also be some provision for the case of less than perfect weather. Simple tent garden pavilions are a great and elegant way to protect from the sun or from light rain, but for heavy rain and stormy weather, you might need something more robust, such as a garden kiosk made of wood or masonry, or a converted car garage, or if nothing else is possible, even half the basement. The host, aka you, will have to be the spirit of the place. Taking care of your guests, making them comfortable, offering them small things such as a cup of tea or coffee, all of the little things help. In the end, it will only make them more willing to be involved in whatever goes on in your art garden. And as if the money for basically maintaining a pretty garden and organizing the schedule of weekly art workshops was not enough, what will greatly boost it is that you can set up an art supply shop in the basement. There, you can sell all the individual supplies for each art workshop, as well as extra supplies for attendants to take home, or even art supplies and stationary items for random people in the neighborhood, who by then will know that your house is basically an art center. Art supplies typically have a very high profit margin, or in other words, they tend to be significantly overpriced, so you have plenty of leeway if you want to be competitive. So in that case, why would anyone buy from anywhere else? Now, the final thing to take care of is the scheduling of the classes and the payment structure. One way to do it is to have, let's say, seven different workshops, one each day. For example, watercolor painting, charcoal drawing, sculpture, photography, ceramics, jewelry design, and textile arts. Diversifying is a great way to bring a larger number of people in, or if too many people have a specific focus in your area, such as, say, watercolor painting, then maybe give it a bit more space, such as two days instead. If attendance is very low at first, you could have them pay a monthly fee for access to all workshops. Remember, they will also pay you for the supplies they'll need. 
This will boost the number of participants in classes that might otherwise not be too popular, as everyone will try to make the most out of their subscription. Or you can have them register for each workshop separately, which will make easier your dealings with each specific teacher. It is also great if you can have some variety, so that it doesn't ever get boring. For example, different techniques of watercolor painting, different styles of charcoal drawing, different materials for sculpture such as clay, wood, stone, wax or concrete, different modes of photography, ceramics of different sizes and usages, jewelry of different base materials, and different methods of application according to variable fabric characteristics. From time to time, maybe also have some special unique workshops on a very niche aspect, such as workshops of unusual techniques from different places of the world, or using materials that are not typically considered common for making art. Overall, this is not only a great business idea, but also a wonderful opportunity to instill the love for the archetype of beauty, which Plato considered to be one of the four pillars of civilization to people who otherwise might not have had an adequate venue to pursue it. Not only is it a great way to make money, but it is also a great and noble calling in a nihilistic low vibration age such as ours to be able to elevate as many souls as possible to a vibrational level where classical values and virtues can be recognized and classical harmony and beauty of the spirit achieved and art could be the most powerful vehicle to that. Thanks for watching.